Our adventures continue with ionic compounds. Nothing too big being added right now. We just found out that there are some metals that have more than one form. And if you're working with those, you have to say which form you're talking about. So for example, this first thing talks about cobalt. And it says cobalt-3. That's because if you check cobalt on your periodic table to see what charge it has, the answer is it can be plus 2 or it can be plus 3. So if they just said cobalt, we'd be a little bit stuck as to which version to use. And they say cobalt 3, that means we mean the 3 plus version. And we need that because when we work out the formula, we need to know which ions we're working with. Cobalt 3 means we're talking about CO3 plus, not the 2 plus. And the chloride ion is minus 1. To match this up, we need equal amounts of charge, so we need minus 3 from our chlorine. That'll mean 3 chlorines. C-O-C-L-3. I'm starting to do these a little faster because I trust you've had some practice. If you're still getting fouled up by this, get a hold of your instructor. They'll be glad to go over some more with you. Titanium-4 oxide. Titanium can be either 4 or 3 according to our table, and they're saying we meant the 4. So Ti4+, plus. and the oxide ion is minus 2. So for this to work out, if we have two oxygens, that would be minus 4 charge. So plus 4, minus 4, that's what we want. The formula for this would be TiO2. Sorry. It's important that this not look like an L because Tl is the element thallium. So. That's got to look like a lowercase i, and now it finally does. All right. Good for those. What else have they got for us? I'm going to do all the ones that are English to formula first, and then I'll come back and do the others. Tin 2 nitrate. Tin is Sn, because in Latin it was called stannum, and its charge is plus 2, they say. On the periodic table, you can see that tin comes in plus 4 and plus 2 versions, and today they meant the plus 2. And the nitrate ion is one of our polyatomics. Dead center here, it's NO3. NO3, and it has a charge of minus 1. So, if we are to have equal amounts of charge, we're going to need two nitrates. I'm about to do something wrong, see if you can tell what it is. Looks like NO32, doesn't it? If you're going to have two nitrates, you must do this. Now that means two of the entire nitrate ion. That's about to happen again, I think. Tin 4 chloride. So they were just giving us tin 2, and now they've switched and said this next one is tin 4, so SN4+. Plus. And the chlorite ion is ClO2 minus. That one is bottom left, right here. Careful, this is chlorate. This one, ClO2, is chlorite. So clearly our charges don't match. We have plus 4 versus only minus 1. We're going to need 4 of this thing. So Sn, C. LO2, and we need four of that entire ion, so there we are. Iron 3 sulfate. Iron is Fe, because in Latin it was called ferrum, and they told us they want the plus three charge for this one. And the sulfate ion is SO4, and it has a charge of minus two, so this is one of those awkward ones. I can't I need some number that I can make using threes and using twos. And, of course, the answer to that is a six. If we take two iron atoms, two iron ions, that gives us a total plus six. And if we go for three sulfates, sorry, I said three while I was writing that, and my brain did brain things wrong. Okay, so two irons will give us plus six, and three sulfate ions will give us minus six. That's what we need, matched up charges. So the formula is going to be Fe2, because there are two iron atoms. Fe2, 
and then we need three of the entire sulfate ions. So there's SO4 bracketed three. That's iron three sulfate. Fair enough. Now we get to do that backwards because when they give you the formula, you don't know which version of the metal they're talking about and you have to figure it out. So if we have FES, S is the sulfide ion. It's here on our table. We know it has a charge of minus two. So one of our ions here was S2 minus. And then the other one is iron question mark. And we have trouble here because iron can be either plus three or plus two ions. Well, this is not a huge mystery. We know the ions here have to match. So if the sulfide is minus one, the iron must be, I'm sorry, the sulfide is minus two, I meant to say. The iron has to be plus two. And that means for our name, we can say this must be, this is two plus. We are talking about iron two sulfide. We know it was some kind of iron. Figuring out this charge means we can put in iron 2. Let's try that a few more times. CuNO3. NO3 is a polyatomic ion. It's right in the middle of your table of those. It is the nitrate ion. So whatever this is, it's something nitrate. This ion has a minus one charge, which means the copper must have a plus one charge. If you look at copper on the periodic table, you can see copper comes as either copper two or copper one. And looking at this, we can see since the nitrate's minus one, this must be plus one. And our name, if you just say copper nitrate, you haven't really answered the question. You should say copper one nitrate. Fair enough. Oh, this thing's messy. MN3PO42. PO4, notice we're always starting with the negative ion because they never have more than one charge. Start over here because there's less uncertainty over here. This is the phosphate ion. So whatever this is, it's something phosphate. How much charge? do we have over here? Well, a phosphate ion, which you can find on your list, uh, top right here, is minus three. And here, not only is this minus three, we have two of them. So our total negative charge is minus six. That means these manganese ions must be bringing a total charge of plus six. So does that mean this is manganese six? No, it doesn't. Why not? The total may be plus six, but there are three manganese ions here. So if the total is six, that means each of these ions must be bringing a charge of plus two. Right? We're saying the total charge is six. It's split up between three identical ions, so they must each be bringing plus two charge. And that means this name is manganese two phosphate. If you look at manganese on the periodic table, right here, you'll see it actually can't even be plus six. The choices are either plus two or plus four, and today we just found we're talking about manganese two. AUP, what's going on with this? P is phosphorus, or an ion form, we call it the phosphide ion, and it has a charge of minus three. So minus three from the phosphide. Well, that has to mean that the AU is plus three. And so this compound is going to be, AU is way down here, it's gold. In Latin it was aurum, that's why the symbol. So the two versions of gold are plus three and plus one, and we just found this is gold three. So gold, one, two, three phosphide. Good. And last one, HgCl2. Chlorides have a minus one charge. You can find that on the table. 
here we have two of them. So there's a total of minus two charge from the chlorides. That has to mean this HG has a charge of plus two. And so our name over here is going to be, what's element HG? Here it is. HG is mercury. In Latin, Latin it was hydrargyrum, which means quicksilver. And it can have a charge of either plus two or plus one. And from our little number crunch here, we found that they must be in the plus two today. So this is mercury two chloride. If, just as an example, if they had just said HgCl, then we'd say, okay, this is a chloride ion. It's, it only has a minus one charge. The mercury must only have a plus one charge, and then we'd be writing mercury one chloride. But if there are two chlorides here, then it's got to be mercury two, if you know what I mean. So good. This is pretty much as complicated as we can make ionic compounds. So if you survive this, there isn't too much more. On to moleculars next.